Hello everybody and welcome back to Tony Northeastern and here we are we're over at South Shields where I've temporarily placed the three kits that we have built already and um, yep we still got one more possibly another one to build and uh, the next one is a pub and um, as you probably know, we have five pubs already here at the northeastern, so this one will make it six. Almost enough for a pub crawl. Anyway, <laughs> let's get started. But before we get started, I just want to show you where all these kits are going. I mean, I think I mentioned it quite a few times but if I just place this set of shops here then you can see what I mean how narrow it is and why the kits have got to be narrow um, obviously when you look from this side you'll only be seeing the tops of the kits you can see the, the handrail in the background the wooden handrail and the idea is, it's just to cover up um, the handrail along this very narrow road. Um, so by the time I screw a batten on there and a uh, piece of plywood and uh, these are stuck onto it, so yeah, so it's quite a narrow road as you can see. But hopefully, um, through running sessions and um, videos being shot where trains come into Jar Road, we you won't get the handrail in the background. You'll just end up with the tops of these buildings. So there you go. I thought I'd show you that. So you've got a rough idea why I'm building the buildings. 10 millimeters in width. Right, so here's the instruction sheet. Um, it's written instructions, apart from a, a little small diagram there for the the roofing details. Um, so yeah, 12 instructions. And um, looking at the photograph there, you can see how small this building is, as it's sandwiched between Woolworths and the department store. Now that looks interesting maybe. Right, moving on. Another uh, information sheet here just shows you the various churches and pubs that they have. Now this pub here looks like the old Cypress that used to be on um, Stevenson Street. It's still there. Might have to look at that. And we've got the Salvation Ar Army building which um, looks interesting as well. So moving on to the kit. Uh, general picture of the kit. Uh, it's a double A and it's the old King's Head public house but uh, we shall see what we name it later on. And we have paving and roofs. Um, I don't think I'll be using this but the card might come in handy. And here is the main kit itself quite straightforward two sheets so we have the face of the building and um, the, the doors and windows and obviously looking at here we have various names we could call so you got King's Head, the Victoria, the Electric, the Castle, Tramway Tavern and the Anchor well, I'm, not, I'm not bother with the, with the Anchor because we have an Anchor already um, so I think it's going to be the Victoria. I haven't got a Victoria, so I may be able to utilize some of these. Even some of these signs here I might be able to put um, to use elsewhere on the layout. And uh, here's the main bit, the main bit of the kit. So, what we've got to do is cut out this section glue it to that section, cut out the windows, form the top, job done. 
Right, so I've made a little bit of a start. I've cut the baseline and the two sides. So I'm just about to cut this um, around this mould in here uh, because it's quite um, a delicate little job. Right, apart from the straight lines, I'm doing the others freehand. So I'm just following the line like so, going back, and there's a second line underneath. So I'm just keeping it tight to the other. I'm pressing quite hard with the pin. So what else have we got? Right, we've got that that comes around the side and into there. Around the side, up to there. So we're almost coming to the end of cutting out all these little bits and pieces um, so we can continue with the kit. I've got to be careful here because we don't want to touch these uh, panels if we can help it when we're cutting through here. Right, so that's the front of the pub done, almost. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick on the pieces that need painting. And then, then we can do that. We can actually paint all the stonework and all of the insides of these cards before we start putting on the door frames and window frames. Right, so I'm just gluing on the column dressings and then we're going to just measure up and cut a piece of card for uh, this here. 
So I've already scribed a little bit of card and that will just go just below this uh, lid flashing you can see here. Let me just let you zoom in a little bit. You can see what I mean. See there's some lid flashing. So this is going to go below the lid flashing. And I'll paint this black. Make sure it fits. Yeah. Now this is in part of the kit. So I've measured this to be 4mm wide and two scribe lines on a two mil piece of card. Right, so before I started painting I could just quickly um, added the side walls and some stiffening um, strips so I can handle the card without um, getting paint everywhere and uh, I think that the paint that I'm using that matte 65 dark green is a perfect match and it blends in quite well Yeah, the paint is such a good match that I'm not even bothering to wipe any excess paint off. Um, still painting from the back. Uh, but I will check now and again just to make sure that there is no spills going over onto the front. But it all depends on how much paint you load up on your brush. Let's have a quick look, see, so there's virtually nothing. I've just done three, three edges there and I've just found a tiny bit on that one. That's all the green painted and the black around the base of the pillars. So that's that done. Um, so I thought to myself, while we are uh, got the green out, I'll cut out the door frames and do that at the same time. Um, yeah, I've added the pelmet goes along the top as well, and uh, I've stuck on a little bit of roof because you otherwise you'll have a, a gap behind the building once this goes up against the back scene. So yeah, it, it's coming along. Right, so these are the door frames and window frames, and when you put them behind the columns, it really does bring the pub to life, adds that 3D image of panelling and frames. So I'm just glue this on now and then we can paint the card like we did with the columns and uh, then we can concentrate on the stonework. Just a light coating of glue and we'll just pop that in there. Making sure it's flush with the bottom. Just give it a little nip on them edges so the glue can sell. Make sure it's lined up and then just squeeze the rest when you're happy with it. And uh, yeah, that's it. Just wipe off any excess glue. Now we move on to the stonework, and the paint I'm using is a matte 28. And uh, as you can see, it's almost a perfect match um, with the original card. But um, I don't want to paint this on too thick because I don't want to lose too much of the card print, especially the Victoria sign. 
So I'm just going to brush it on the side and then wipe it off around the name. And then just so that the name is just about poking through. So it's kind of like fading. Sort of like that. So you can just see the name, but it's just fading. And what I'll do then to make sure I do see the name, because you don't know how it really paint reacts when it dries, so I'll just take a little bit of that paint off around the name of the pub. And then we just carry on as normal. Good thing about painting a uh, card is just that it just dries up so quickly. And um, I don't want to just take a little bit more off there. I've got a little bit of a shadow in the paint there. Let's just take that back a bit. Obviously, I want to cover my imprint when I scored the card with a pen. So that we just have a little bit of a fade in there. There we go. Right, so I'll paint the frames and then um, we'll, we're almost ready for the windows. What we're going to do now is cut out the windows and um, then we can fit them. But before we do, I'm going to do something that I've none not done before. Um, one of you guys had suggested it is to add a little tiny bit of gloss to the windows um, but I'm gonna have to put it on so thinly that it doesn't fade the card if you know what I mean because it's only printed on here and if you put too much paint or lacquer or anything on, on the card then you start losing the detail um, of the windows um, and whatever it is on the card so I want to give it a try and see what happens clear gloss give this a little bit of a stir before I use it because I don't want any drops to fall onto the, onto the printed sheets. Just on the glazing. And then we'll leave this to dry and then we'll cut out the windows ready for fitting. You can barely see it. I suppose you've got to put a layer on there, but I don't want to go too mad. It's on there. You see there's a little bit of a sheen on the windows. So we shall try that. Wait till it's dry and then we'll fit them. Some time later, looking at the windows, you can't see uh, the gloss that I have added. Um, it just seems to evaporate. It might take a couple of coats, but you can't see any sheen in there at all. Yeah, the camera's not picking it up. It's just uh, evaporated into the card. Right, so I um, might as well continue and put in the, the doors and the windows for the lower half of the building and then that will then finish that off apart from the sign that goes under there and uh, the pub sign which will be 
glued onto the wall there. Right, so I've completed the kit for the Victoria. I've just got a couple of little things I need to add to that um, kit. But I just thought I'd bring it over here to show you the comparisons between the two. Um, the Saracen's head and the Victoria. Now, I think the Saracen's head because it's scratch built is, is is far better I think than the um, card kit but this is not weathered yet once I've toned it down I think it'll blend in quite nicely um, when it come when I come to fit it to the back scene so the only thing I want to show, I just wanted to highlight the, the, the differences um, between these two models as it were. Right, here she is, Queen Victoria. Now, I've already put one coat of varnish on there and if you tilt it one way you can still see little speckles of gloss varnish. If you look at the castle there you see you can't see nothing but if you look at Victoria you can still see the little speckles of varnish. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give this sign another coat of varnish and hopefully we'll um, get it to gloss a little bit more um, give it an extra stir and uh, we shall see what happens um, while it's drying we shall make a bracket so we can hang this sign um, on the pub um, like we've done with the Saracen's head I uh, forgot to mention that while the camera was over there, but there you go. So we've got the, the gloss again, giving it a really good stir. And uh, same as before, I'm just going to brush it on very lightly. And hopefully, because it's already had one coat, it should, in theory, gloss over as it were so you've got to be careful with ink print because it sometimes can run right so at the moment it's looking pretty glossy let's put a little bit more on Yeah, that's a good good helping of gloss on there at the moment. It still looks like it's drying out. Right, I better not touch it too much in case the ink starts to bleed. Right, we should leave that. I might have to put another coat on by the looks of it because it really is soaking in. Right, so what I'm doing now is I'm making that bracket uh, that I've just mentioned. What I could do is just pull a strand of copper wire out of this cable. Um, it's, it's normally 0.5 in diameter. It's brilliant for doing things like this. So get it nice and straight. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to wrap it around a uh, 1.5 drill bit. And then form the bracket. So I wrap it round so it comes back on itself, and this creates a small loop like so. Pull it that way as well, get nice and tight, and then pull that straight because you want to keep this bit straight if you can. Right, then pull your drill bit out and then snip that circle back as you can see so you want to lose this bit of course right so we cut the base of that loop off like so then we crush it so we get the perfect circle we have to make it smaller
and that forms a loop as you can see so what we'll do now is we'll straighten that out and then we measure for the upright of this bracket just got to straighten that out just squeeze it together a little bit so, right so what we want this bracket to be roughly 13 millimeters from the edge of that loop so there grab it there then fold it back up at 90 degrees so this piece here is where the sign's going to hang right so just checking it over and then we want to go up a minimum of 10 millimeters so it's about there and we'll do we'll do exactly the same again another circle So we wrap it round the 1.5 drill, pulling it nice and tight. Make it start. There you go. We've got to start and put the drill back in. Put the drill back in. Pull it tight. Okay. Take the drill bit out. Snip that off just underneath the circle and then crush it again give it a little squeeze and crush it again right it's not quite doing what I wanted to do there we go. So this is what we've got now. See? All we want to do now is put a little tie-in bit between the two legs. Just straight forward. Just straighten out the copper wire again. And bend one piece at 45 but have a little bit of a, a lip on it. About two or three mil. So that way we can solder it to the leg. Right, so we've got a piece, we'll just offer that up. And then we'll just mark that with a pen. I'll show you there, you can see where I hold that in place you can see what I'm doing now see so we got the up, upright up against there where I've just folded it see and then we'll just mark that where it crosses over you can see it crossing over so I'm just putting a mark there and we fold it over the other way 45 degree angle again And we end up with something like that. If I just hold that right way up, like that. And we solder this bit and this bit. What we'll do now, we'll just cut off two or three mil there, where that pen mark is. If I just turn that around, you can see it. Right, so I'll just cut that off there. That should be just enough room got to keep hold of both ends in case one end flies off and then we'll just solder that into there to form that bracket so what I've got to do now is just solder it so I've got a little bit of flux there and there so what I'm doing is just going to 
press down hard there and there and just hopefully that the solder takes Right, so it's got a hold of that end, but we need to get it to hold that end as well. Oh, I heard it click then, so it's gone flat. So I've got a little bit too much solder on there, so I'm going to take some of that off. Do. Let's see if we can get that a little bit flatter on this end. lifted so we've got to get that down right so that's nice and flat there now what I've got to do now is just file the loose solder off of there then we've got our bracket. Right, so with a little bit of clean up um, with a file, um, there it is, it's just ready for painting now. And then we'll um, see how it looks um, with the sign hanging underneath it. Right, so I'm now cutting out the pub sign, the Victoria or the Queen Vic, which is probably well known. As. Now this has already had two coats of gloss varnish and there is a little hint of um, glossiness about it as you can see there. So it probably needs a third coat but it would probably work better if both of these faces or backs were glued together. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue these backs together. So I'm going to just fold it, open up the fold and then glue them together and hopefully this time when I add the gloss it will add more shine to it. So I folded the sign up, stuck it together and now I stuck it to the the bracket that we made earlier and um, yeah it looks quite smart all the old iron work I would say that looks like um, so what I'm just going to do now I'm just going to give it another light coating of gloss on the picture while it's uh, stuck in position um, because it's got nowhere else to seep in because it's folded now, the, the gloss should just lie on the top of the picture. And we'll do the same the other side and we shall leave that to dry and uh, we shall see what that kind of sheen we're going to get once it's done. Um, because that would be the third coat of gloss. There you go. So we shall leave that to dry and we'll have one last it's taken three coats to get uh, the shine that I want on this sign. You can just make it out there quite glossy now. Um, one coat when it was on the sheet of paper. No, sorry, two coats when it was on the sheet of paper and a third coat when it was folded up. I just think to gloss up the windows, you have to have the back side of the card sealed. Because as you can see there, the gloss is coming through 
steel and that had had two coats so I'm not going to bother trying to put a third coat on on the windows. There's a little bit of sheen on the windows but uh, you're hardly going to see these anyway, these uh, kits that I've been doing because uh, Jar Road station's in the way. Unless I do. Right, so this is the temporary home where I've been planting the buildings and um, yep, it works out roughly about 780 millimeters was all this lot put together, so I'm still way short on my target of 1 meter 100. So what we're getting there. Um, I think once the once I've made the backboard for these buildings to go on, I can lie them, lay them out how I want them, and um, yeah, we should uh, get an idea on uh, how they how I want to arrange them once I get the backboard made. So anyway, another pub at the northeastern, the Victoria. Right, thanks again for watching. Until next time, stay safe everybody. Bye.